Today we'll open this infamous book that teaches us the secret real reasons we fear villains. And I guarantee a lot of these reasons you've never even heard of before. Firstly, let's quickly discuss the origin of fear. The most common theory for this origin being the predator-prey theory. Basically, this theory is saying we evolved to fear things because it's a way for us to be aware of predators and survive longer. And the amygdala is the part of our brain that sends us these fear signals to help us get out of these threatening situations. Now the first main reason we fear villains psychologically is the traumatic experiences they've caused in the past. Many times you'll notice when a movie starts, it starts with a traumatic, horrifying occurrence that the villain has caused. Instantly, instantly painting an evil, horrific image in our minds. For example, in The Flash, we fear Reverse Flash now, 8 years later, because we know what he has done the night he killed Barry Allen's mother. So that horrific night, this evil villain walked in and stabbed his mother to death, that is stuck in our heads. So even 8, 9, 10, 11 years later, our brain recalls to that moment and is like, okay, this man has this capability, this level of capability, and that is what causes the fear. And on top of that, show directors are very smart and they understand this, so they further highlight this trauma by making the traumatic night as horrific and intense as possible. Once again, looking at the horrific night where Reverse Flash killed Flash's mother, the entire scene, the music is very suspenseful, the whole time the speedsters are running around faster than ever in a very hectic, condensed environment. Like this exact shot right here is meant to be shot like this because it shows how intense everything is. The way these two people are speeding around in a very small room, it compacts everything down and just makes everything that much more intense. Tense. And these things overwhelm us and show us just how much trauma this villain causes. And all these little little things add up in our minds and really paint a really horrific picture of this evil villain. Next, we can also quickly address how our individual past, your personal past, also affect how much we fear a villain. And overall, how much we fear in general. The first reason you might individually fear something differently is because of your childhood experiences. This book states one of the key reasons we fear is our attachment style. And it further states, attachment refers to the emotional bond between a child in their primary caregiver and it plays a key role in shaping the child's sense of safety and security in the world. And so basically what that means for us is that children who experience secure attachment characterized by consistent and responsive caregiving are more likely to develop a sense of safety and trust in their environment. While the other children on the opposite where they don't experience this caregiving, happy, protective environment, they develop a heightened sensitivity to potential threats and a greater risk for anxiety and fear related disorder. So what this means for you specifically is maybe when you grew up you weren't even the best household, maybe you got some abuse, maybe you got some neglect, and that actually makes you fear situations just a bit more. It literally makes you fear villains, it makes you fear shows, it makes you fear real life things more than someone who was in a very safe household because overall your sense of safety is a little bit compromised. You're still a little bit worried for your safety everywhere you go. Guys, I did not know we were gonna go this deep. This is this is some deep stuff, bro. <laughs> what? And the second reason this book highlights of why you might fear something differently is your cultural experiences. Children who grew up in cultures that really went against fear and stigma it and they're like, yo, be brave, man up, man up. Those people are likely to grow up and suppress or deny their feelings of fear, which can actually lead to increased distress and fear-related symptoms in the future because you have it all bottled up for now. Guys, if I'm being honest, before I read this book, I did not know so many different things tied into how much you fear something, how much you fear villains, how much you fear anything in life. That is crazy. But now going back to why we fear villains specifically, the next really interesting point that I've literally never heard before, this is my first time hearing this point, but it kind of makes sense. This topic is called catastrophic thinking. And catastrophic thinking refers to the tendency to interpret potential threats in the most extreme and negative way possible. And a beautiful example the book gives is it says, someone who experiences fear of flying may catastrophize the situation by imagining the plane crashing even though the likelihood of such an event is very, very low. So catastrophic thinking is literally like a state of mind that makes you fear something way much more than you really should. And this applies to villains because, like I said in the first point, our brain has built up so many scary and negative thoughts towards a villain because of what they've done in the past. So now we think the worst will happen when Whenever, whenever this villain is around, even if there's no sign of dangerous activity. The villain may simply be having a conversation with someone and you'll wonder, maybe he has something planned, maybe he's gonna shoot someone, maybe he's gonna kill someone, I definitely, you know, and then you start building up the fear, what's he gonna do, what's he gonna do, even though he might just simply be having a conversation with someone, you're like, oh my god, he might have a gun, he might, and that's how you build the fear. The fear literally gets built by itself just because of what that person is. Guys, you know what, I'll give you one better, let's take a real life example. Imagine you guys, you know, you're in a grocery store, you gotta get some bananas, apples, for your family, yo, go get some bananas. You walk into the grocery store, boom, 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 boom. And all of a sudden, a person that has murdered someone, a murderer, has walked into the store. You know, he had a great lawyer, so he beat the charges. He's a free man now, and he, he wants some bananas as well. You know, that's why he's at the grocery store. And he also repeatedly tells the media that he's a changed man. He never wants to do killing again. He claims to be a very good person. He claims to be a very noble man. Everything, you know, seems very nice about him. But now here's the catch. Even with him saying all of that and even doing actions to show he's a great man, you won't believe that. 
that, you will try your very best to get out of that situation. You will not stay in that grocery store with that extra murderer, no matter what he says or does. And then you'll automatically start feeling fearful because of this negative catastrophic thinking. So whenever you guys are watching a show, even when you're just looking at a villain, subconsciously, you're thinking the worst will happen, which is why you build fear for a villain. Now, the next very interesting reason we fear villains is actually because of control. And what I mean by that is we fear more when there is less control. You say it with me. We fear more when there's less control. Yeah, you guys see how it's like rhyming? We fear more when there's less control. We fear more when there's, you see? Like, it's a, it's a cool thing. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Let me, let me explain. As the book states, beliefs about control and predictability can also influence fear. Individuals who believe that they have control of their environment and can predict and manage potential threats may experience less fear and anxiety than those who feel powerless and out of control. Now, keeping this principle in mind, have you guys ever noticed whenever a villain makes an appearance, a couple minutes before their appearance, control of the situation has already been lost. Let's look at the movie Scream, for example. Before the villain Ghostface even kills someone and makes his entry, we are already in a heightened, fearful situation because maybe the power goes out. Maybe this dude's left home alone showering while his mom's out with the car. Maybe the victim hurt something so they go alone to investigate. That right there is showing that the victim is losing control of the situation, which makes our fear so much more real. We're like, okay, anything can really happen now because this happened. Does that make sense? Like in the Scream movie, the killer always calls and lets the victim know that they see them or they are in the house already. This is done strategically because it shows the loss of control. It really shows how scared the victim can become now because anything can happen. Knowing the threat has become so much more real makes us fear the villain that much more. And also, you know, really quick, if you guys want to go again, let's do another example. We can do one more. Think of any horror movie ever. Think of literally any horror movie ever. Think of it in your mind. Go ahead, think of one. Anytime a haunting or like some scary things about to happen in a horror movie, a little bit before that, they're always put in a very loss of control situation. Maybe the person's home alone at night. Maybe the baby starts crying randomly in the other side of the house so you already a loss of control you're like okay something's compromised my house is compromised something is going on in the house even a sound effect lets you know subconsciously that your house is compromised your safety is compromised letting us fear the villain that much more oh my god i'm eating right now guys i can't i don't know if you guys can tell but i'm eating i'm slaying this video right now oh my god but also really quickly getting away from all that scary stuff if you guys want to get to know me more personally if you guys want to see weekly vlogs of me like doing random things in my life like cooking going to the gym blah 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 giving personal advice, whatever, make sure you join my Patreon, link in description, so you know, we can really connect and talk for my loyal diehard fans. I love y'all. But anyways, now what's also very, very important to note is that our fear for a villain in a movie or a show, or literally our fear for anything in the world ever, will never ever stay that high, ever. As a movie or a show goes on, all of us start fearing the villain less and less. Take for example, Reverse Flash from The Flash, a villain we fear tremendously in season 1 of the show, does not have the same fear attached to him in season 8 or season season 9 of the same show. And ladies and gentlemen, the biggest reason for this is exposure therapy. The book states, exposure therapy involves gradually exposing the individual to the feared object or situation in a controlled and safe environment, with the aim of reducing the fear response and increasing feelings of safety and control. And this is a very common method people use in real life to deal with their fears. Maybe you're scared of the color yellow. You keep wearing yellow every day even though you're a little bit scared of the color. Oh, oh. You can just wear the color every day and over time you're like, okay, it's just a color. And the same thing applies to a villain. The more and more we see of a villain, the less and less fear we have of that villain. Because subconsciously and psychologically, seeing this villain over and over gets very repetitive and kind of boring. On top of that, the more and more a villain comes back and doesn't actually do anything, it subconsciously lets us know we have more control of the situation. And like I said before, if we have more control of a situation, our fear goes down. Like if me and you saw a villain show up, right, for the first time, it would be very scary. You know, the intense music, the very scary eyes would be like, oh... Ooh, oh my god. But then we see him for eight entire years from that point on. Eight entire years. And you know, sometimes they did some menacing things, but most of the time they were kind of just there. Our entire fear with them would kind of just, you're not really doing much, buddy. Our main character is still alive. Like, you didn't really accomplish anything. <laughs> okay. So what that means for me and you, to end it off on a very beautiful note, you can successfully reduce your fear of anything, anything in the world, simply by being exposed to it more. Also known as exposure therapy. <laughs> Take that, super villain. Your 30 inch knife doesn't scare me anymore. Yeah, because I'm like that. Okay, well, actually, like, may maybe just like a bit, but like, chill, bro, chill.